Okay, folks, I'm going to call this meeting to order. Special Town Meeting 2023-1 will please come to order. I want to welcome, thanks guys. Um, I want to welcome town meeting members um, and I'm going to ask the clerk to please read the warrant and then we'll have some announcements. Town of Lexington warrant, special town meeting. If there's no objection, we're going to dispense with further reading of the warrant. Seeing no objection, um, if you could read the constable's return. Constable's return of service, October 18th, 2023. I have served the foregoing warrant for the November 7th, 2023 special town meeting number one by posting a printed copy thereof in the town office building, also by sending by mail, postage prepaid, a printed copy of such warrant addressed to each dwelling house and to each dwelling unit in multiple dwelling houses, apartment building, or other buildings in the town, 14 days at least before the time of said special town meeting number one. Attest Michael R. Barry, Constable of Lexington. Thank you, Ms. Dealdredi. Um, Vince, if we could turn the volume off of this monitor here, it's, it's a little bit behind the rest of the hall. I think that's what we're hearing, right? Oh, it's a computer. Just the volume, don't, don't turn off any, yeah. Let's, let's get a trained professional to, uh, <laughs> no offense, but law school, law school, I mean, come on. <laughs> All right, folks, um, we're gonna have a lot of fun tonight. Um, warm welcome, welcome back, town meeting members, those of you who are um, meeting in person, those of you who are remote. I also want to warmly welcome the town and school staff, members of boards and committees, article sponsors, um, as well as any other visitors that we have with us tonight. Um, if you are a, a visitor, not a town meeting member, you're welcome to sit anywhere in the balcony that you want, but if you think that you might want to speak for or against a motion, um, we do have a process for that in this balcony to my left here. Um, we have a staff person, actually he's our new director of communications, Jonas Miller, who's up there, if you could wave to everybody. So if, <laughs> so if you are um, a visitor who would like to address the meeting, um, with something that's under discussion tonight. You should identify yourself to Mr. Miller. He will put you into the virtual queue for the appropriate article, and that will allow me to call on you at the appropriate time. We also have some members of the public who are basically participating remotely. They've submitted statements to be read at the appropriate time, and when that happens, Mr. Miller will read those statements. So thank you, Mr. Miller, and welcome. Um, this is a hybrid meeting. We're using uh, virtual meeting technology, Zoom for the remote participants, the web-based portal for everybody for queuing and for voting. The entire meeting is being broadcast live on RCN channel 15, Verizon channel 37, Comcast channel 99, and in high def on RCN channel 629. It's also online streaming live at lexmedia.org's website on their government live stream. Members of the general public can follow the proceedings on cable TV or on lexmedia.org and um, certainly can also come and attend here in Baton Hall. Some technical instructions, reminders. For those of you who are participating in person tonight, you received a tablet when you checked in. It's already logged in with your new credentials, so you're ready to vote and queue and raise objections or points of order. If at any time your screen goes blank, there is a button underneath the handle, and it's the button closest to the center. You can push that to reawaken your tablet, and if you don't see the portal screen when you do that, you can just use your finger to gently swipe, and you should be able to get back to the portal. If, if not, you can stand in place, raise your hand, and a member of our Cracker Jack IT staff will come right to your rescue. So um, they are here and ready to help. For those who are participating remotely, 
you're using your own tablet, your own computer, your own smartphone to log into the town meeting portal using the instructions and username and the new password that was mailed to your home several weeks ago. So you've all, I can see you've successfully launched Zoom. You now know the Zoom etiquette. Because you have great power now, we're not um, doing a Zoom webinar. You can control your own audio and video. With great power comes great responsibility. Keep it shut off until I call on you. you know, believe me, you'll, you'll, you'll be happier for that. Um, so if you are remote, if at any time you're having trouble with the technology, you can call the IT support line at 781-876-0093, and um, IT staff will be able to help you. Um, at this time, I want to recognize Tim Gonzalez, who's our um, uh, Director of Innovation and Technology, who's managing this whole technological setup tonight in Baton Hall, along with um, Joe Pato. I just want to know if he has any other um, comments that he'd like to make or any other instruction. Tim. Tim is helping someone with the technology at this point, so that's fine. Thank you. Um, okay, so while I'm going to be briefly reviewing some of the parliamentary procedure, but this is a perfect time while I'm doing that for you all to register your attendance. This is a chance for you to use the voting function, both in person, here, and remotely. And we're going to keep that on in the background until I announce the quorum at the end of my parliamentary remarks. So let's see if staff have that screen ready. Okay. <clears throat> so if you get a message, like I just did, that the page is temporarily unavailable, all you need to do is tap on the line where you see the, the web address, and it will reload, and mine's reloaded. And so in order to um, uh, register your attendance, you can say yes, no, or abstain. So press yes, no, or abstain, and then press the blue cast your vote button. Your vote's not recorded until you see next to your name an indication of how you voted. If you don't see that, press yes, no, or abstain again. Press cast your vote again until you get the proper feedback. Okay, so we're going to leave that attendance open. Um, and if any folks at home are having difficulty um, you know, registering your attendance, please call the staff hotline. Again, that number is 781-876-0093. Um, for folks in the hall, later when we're voting, if you are having trouble getting your vote to register or having any difficulty, for you, instead of calling the hotline, you should just stand in place and sort of wave your hand um, so I'll know that uh, you need some help and, and the IT staff can help you. Also, if there are folks at home who are having difficulty when we're doing a real vote that's timed and has an, an ending time that's shorter than what we're doing right now, you should raise your hand in Zoom and then I will be able to recognize you, call on you, and we can register your vote as a voice vote. So that's for folks who are remote. Okay, parliamentary procedure. Each speaker speaking for or against a motion may speak for up to three minutes. That three minute time limit also applies to members of the public who are speaking for or against a motion. If you are a town meeting member, you also have the option of posing questions. You would get into the question line for that. And your time limit is two minutes for the posing of the question and any follow-up. We turn off the timer while you're receiving answers to your questions. No person may speak more than once on a motion until everyone who wants to speak has had a chance to for the first time. And in any case, no one can speak more than twice on a motion. You can only interrupt debate for a point of personal privilege or a point of order, and we do have a line for that that you can queue up and get into. 
um, or to serve notice of reconsideration. So if you use the point of order line um, on the portal, that should be for things like, I can't hear the proceedings, um, there's some sort of a disturbance in the hall, um, or if you think that there's been an incredible lapse in procedure. So that's what the point of order line, personal privilege. Um, under our bylaw regarding reconsideration for all the financial articles, the finance committees are no longer required to give notice of reconsideration, and they can move reconsideration for purposes of making technical um, corrections or for um, rejiggering the budget because something we've done earlier has put it out of balance. Um, but anyone else who wants to reserve the option of moving reconsideration needs to serve notice of reconsideration within 30 minutes of the close of the article in question, and obviously the same night as that article. So serving notice just means you're reserving your right to later move reconsideration. The previous question, this is a handy parliamentary um, maneuver. If you begin to feel that you've heard sufficient debate, on a motion, or if you feel like people are starting to say, this, make the same arguments, um, you can move the question. You can do that from the yes, no, or the question queue. You can pick the shortest line, but you do have to get in line and be recognized by the moderator. It is not a debatable motion, and that means the only thing you can say before moving the question is your name and precinct, and then say, I move the question. If you say anything else, offer an opinion, anything else that counts as debate, and so your motion um, of, for the previous question is out of order. Um, finally, you all know this, um, remarks should be relevant to the motion before us. They shouldn't contain personal attacks. Um, there's no tolerance for disparaging remarks about any person or group or their motives. So thank you, you all have always been very good about um, setting that tone. So let's see um, where we are with attendance. All right, we have, um, we definitely have a quorum, so that um, I announce that we have a quorum and we can now close the attendance vote. Thank you. So um, at this time, I'd like Mr. Pado to make a motion to approve the use of remote and hybrid technology for this special town meeting 2023-1. Mr. Pado. Madam Moderator, I so move. Thank you. If there are any objections, please use the raise objection button in the town meeting portal. Ms. McKenna, what's your point of order? Uh, Don McKenna, Precinct 6, Madam Moderator. Um, I'm just trying to figure out how the, um, who is here is working, because I've noticed that there's several people who are here, and I haven't gone through all of it, that say that they're remote. Um, so I'm not sure, like for example, um, Miss Hay is listed as being remote, and we can all see her, and my friend Marsha Traber is here, and we can see her as well. Um, so Thank just, you. Yeah, so thanks. you've given me the perfect opportunity to instruct people on how to correct that if it's reporting that incorrectly. So if you look on your portal on the left-hand side of the screen where you have um, an array of menu options, one of them down near the end is set location. So take a moment now to press that. And... Um, indicate whether you're in Batten Hall or another location. And that will correct um, what Ms. McKenna just noticed. So thank you, Ms. McKenna. All right, folks, seeing no objections, the motion that Mr. Pado made carries. Thank you, Mr. Pado. The meeting's now open on Article One: reports of boards and committees. Um, uh, for a motion to receive and place on file the report of the Appropriation Committee, Mr. Parker. Madam Moderator, so move. Thank you, Mr. Parker. If anyone has an objection to receiving that report and placing it on file, please use the raise objection function. 
Seeing none, the motion carries. Mr. Parker, do you have any remarks at this point? Uh, I do not, thank you. Thank you. Um, for a motion to receive and place on file the report of the Capital Expenditures Committee, Mr. Lamb. Madam Moderator, I so move. Are there any objections? Seeing none, that report is received and placed on file. Do you have any remarks at this point? No, thank you. Thank you. For a motion to receive and place on file the report of the School Building Committee, Ms. Cuthbertson. Madam Moderator, I so move. Thank you. Is there any objection to receiving that report and placing it on file? Seeing none, the motion carries. We will now view the video presentation of the report from the School Building Committee. Hello, this is Jim Malloy, Lexington Town Manager, and I'm going to be giving a brief update on the Lexington High School project uh, and uh, on the, from the School Building Committee. We've hired our owner's project manager, uh, our OPM as we call it. The OPM assists the town with the process and serves as the town's eyes and ears on any project. They work with the architect and the contractor to bring together the plans and construction for the finished building to really uh, accomplish the vision that the community has. Lexington has hired Doran Whittier as our OPM. They have many years of experience and have worked on numerous projects in Massachusetts. They're not only one of the top design firms, but also one of the top green building firms and a top owner's project manager. We've also hired our architect. Uh, the town and the MSBA met on October 3rd, 2023, and interviewed three architectural finalists and selected SMMA as the designer of the new high school. This was the town's number one choice and a firm that the town has worked with in the past. SMMA is based in Cambridge. They were founded in 1955 and have provided innovative and practical designs for numerous schools in Massachusetts. SMMA has done 29 MSBA projects, including 17 high schools. We are often asked about the timeline on the project and when this will be coming back to town meeting. So the, the initial appropriation was from a special town meeting in 2022 in March of 2022, it was embedded in the annual town meeting. Town meeting approved $1,825,000 for the feasibility study phase of the project. We anticipate right now coming back to town meeting at the annual town meeting in 2024 and asking for an additional $10 million for the remaining design work to bring it to the point where we can move on to the construction funding. During this period, we envision a six month period where we will have community engagement with both the architect and the owner's project manager, as well as the school building committee. At the special town meeting in the fall of 2025, town meeting will be asked to approve the construction funding. Until the design is complete, we don't know quite what that funding level will be, but right now it's estimated to be between 340 and $440 million. Shortly thereafter, in December of 2025, we are planning the debt exclusion vote for the high school project. Assuming all of those pass, we will be under construction from 2026 until 2029, and we envision and estimate that the new Lexington High School will open in the fall of 2029. Finally, uh, during the annual town meeting, we had provided some estimates on the cost and how we had planned on mitigating the impact to taxpayers using a capital stabilization fund solely dedicated to the high school project. The ongoing funding source made up of new projects that were approved by town meeting using the PSDUP process or any of the new projects that are being built as part of the rezoning of Hartwell Avenue. The bar on the left is what we had presented in March of 2023. And it shows that from the projects that were already completed that the town was collecting property taxes on and setting aside into this capital stabilization fund that we had, uh, we were at $1,733,000 
or about 7.9% of the estimated debt on a high school project of $400 million with the state MSBA reimbursing 25%. The next section of that bar on the left, the $10,261,000 are for projects that have already been approved as PSDUP projects or on Hartwell Avenue that have not been built yet. That consists of another 46.6%. And then the remaining 45.5% would be the amount that would fall to taxpayers at this point in time. The bar on the right is where we are right now in October of 2023. Right now we're setting aside $4,722,749 into that capital stabilization fund. This makes up 21.5% of the debt service that is estimated from a $400 million project with the MSBA uh, funding 25%. For those other projects that are already approved but not yet completed or constructed, there's another $7,272,000 that we estimate will come in on property taxes over the next couple of years. Combined, these two will provide nearly 56% of the debt service on the new high school. We will continue to provide an update on the capital stabilization fund and how it will be used to mitigate the high school debt at every town meeting between now and the time that the high school is actually constructed and we have that first debt payment so that town meeting members and taxpayers are very well aware of what the impact will be. Uh, and that's uh, all of the report. Uh, we will continue, as I said, to provide this report at every town meeting between now and 2029. Thank you. Next, I'll ask Mr. Pato for a motion to next take up Article 12. Mr. Pato. Madam Moderator, I so move. If anyone has an objection, please use the raise objection function in the portal. Seeing none, the motion carries. The meeting's now open on Article 12, Amend Zoning Bylaw, 2013-2027 Massachusetts Avenue, Owner Petition. The motion is the one before you, dated today and on file with the town clerk. Now I say it's dated today because we made a small clerical correction to the motion that was originally posted on October 30th, 2023. Mr. Grant for that motion. Mr. Grant, if you could press the button on your um, microphone, it's down near the base. Is that it? Yes. Thank you. Good evening, Madam Moderator, fellow town meeting members, Ed Grant, Precinct 6. I wish to tell you that I won't be voting on this article as a town meeting member because I'm working with the petitioner, Tricia Perez Keneally. Madam Moderator, I so move Article 12. Thank you. And now, folks, um, turn your attention to the screen. Um, folks at home, turn your attention to the Zoom screen so we can view the video presentation. Hello, and welcome to the Inn at Hastings Park. My name is Trisha Perez Keneally, and it's my pleasure to be here with you this evening to talk to you about the Inn at Hastings Park and what we're hoping to do with the proposed amendment. Walking through our front door, you'll see that the inn is fully up and running. Because of town meeting's decision in 2012 to rezone the property, we were able to open a 22 guest room inn with a restaurant that has become a world-class destination. Since we opened in 2012, we have received guests from over 50, all 50 states and over 50 countries. We are so proud to represent the town of Lexington to visitors who come from all over the world. The reason I'm coming before you tonight is we would like to amend the special zoning process that took place in 2012 so that we can cover all of the seating that has existed since we opened and which we hope to use fully in the years to come. When we opened, we agreed to have 54 seats in the restaurant, but since that time we have demonstrated through our 
responsibility to the town, the service that we've given to all of our guests, that we are capable and the site is capable of handling more. When we first opened, a big concern was the intersection at Worthen and Mass Ave. Since we opened, the intersection has been completely redesigned. So many of the concerns about sight lines, about the traffic load, have been mitigated through the efforts of redesigning the intersection. In addition, we are a much more seasoned team and we are capable of handling a lot more in terms of the number of people on our property. The most important thing to note is that we are not asking to expand the physical capacity of our building. What we're asking for is to have all of the seats that currently exist be covered. So I'm going to take you on a quick tour. This is our dining room. This is our bar area with the eight seats at the bar. This is our private dining room, which is right off of the bar. And this is our library, which we sometimes also refer to as artistry on the green. And this is the room right off of the reception area. As you can see, it's right over here. During the pandemic, we were given latitude by the state to serve people outside, and this is our porch area. And welcome to our back garden. During the spring and summer and autumn, it's set with these fall tables. And then during the winter, it becomes our in glue wonderland. So we have the, geod the geodisc domes. What's important to know about this area is that these tables are by reservation only. You cannot just walk up to the inn and say, I want to sit in the back garden. So in conclusion, what we are asking for in this amendment are three things. The first thing is a procedural change to make sure that the numbering matches the zoning. The second thing is that we're asking that we increase the capacity from 54 seats to reflect the seats that are here. There are 54 seats in the restaurant. There are eight seats in the bar, 10 in the private dining room, 20 in artistry in the green or the sitting room that's off of the front desk area. There are 20 on the porch and there are the 24 that exist in the back garden. And it is important to note that we do not have the, the operational capacity to use all of those seats simultaneously, but we do think that it's important that everything line up with all of the licensing and the different restrictions and requirements from the city and the state. And then the last thing is, is that because we are a special zoning area, we can define the definition of the parking requirements. So we're asking that we slightly change the ratio so that it's a one to 12 ratio for the number of seats in the restaurant. So I appreciate your time. If anyone has any questions, of course, I'm happy to answer any of those. And I'll look forward to welcoming you all back at the inn sometime very soon. Thank you again for your time and your consideration, and I hope that you will vote for this amendment. Thank you. For a motion to receive and place on file the Article 12 report of the Planning Board, Mr. Sean Bacher. Madam Moderator, I so move. Thank you. If there's any objection to receiving that report, please use the raise objection button. Seeing none, the motion carries. Mr. Sean Bacher. Madam Moderator, on October 25th, 2023, the Planning Board held a public hearing. I'm going to just ask you to pause for a moment. Oh, Can folks hear, hear him? No, no. Okay, so um, it's very directional, and there you go. Madam Moderator, on 20, October 25th, 2023, the Planning Board held a public hearing and unanimously recommends the town meeting approve Article 12 to amend the zoning for the preliminary site development and use plan for the planned commercial district at 2013 to 2027 Massachusetts Avenue containing the inn at Hastings Park as presented. Thank you. And for the uh, Mr. Pato for the select board. Mr. Pato. Madam Moderator, 
As of the select board's meeting this evening, the select board unanimously support passage of this article. Thank you. Um, we're now open for debate and questions, so uh, town meeting members, you m should get into the virtual queue if you want to speak for or against or have any questions. Um, at this time, Mr. Miller, could you um, present on behalf of Chris Dunham, um, one of the members of the public who submitted a statement. Mr. Miller. This is on behalf of Chris Dunham, who lives at 2006 Massachusetts Ave. He says, quote, I oppose this article as a resident of the neighborhood the inn operates in, a one to 12 parking spot patron ratio is not adequate. Expansion of capacity zoned from residential property just 10 years ago from 54 to 128 people unnecessarily creates opportunity for the inn to host large and noisy events. Events compound the parking issue with simultaneous arrival and smaller number of guests per car. The inn has noted operations with present kitchen and quality of service can only accommodate 60 to 80 diners. So why are we expanding capacity so far beyond that? Thank you. And Mr. Rossi with a question. <clears throat> so Mr. Rossi, this is now your opportunity to unmute yourself and if you want us to see you, which is your choice, um, for you to turn on your video. Hey, if I did it properly, I should have done both. Is, am I, can you hear me? We can, we can hear you and we can see you on the screen over here. So thank you, Mr. Rossi. Go ahead. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I've had the, the uh, pleasure of dining at the Inn on more than one occasion. It is a fabulous asset to the town. My question is simply, uh, with regard to handicap parking, could you give us a description as to, with the revisions you're seeking, the number of handicapped spaces in their proximity to the closest entrance to any of the dining facilities? Thank you, Mr. Rossi. Ms. Keneally. Do you, Madam Moderator? I can answer that. Yes, go right ahead. Um, Mr. Rossi, thank you so much for your question. So we have two handicap spaces. There's a handicap space in each of our parking lots. On the Mass Ave lot, which is the lot that is shaded by the evergreen trees, the spot is right near the handicap accessible ramp that is parallel to the building. The handicap spot in the Worthen Road lot is about 10 or 15 feet from the door that leads to an elevator that leads up through the building. Mr. Rossi, do you have any follow up? Are both of those spots are uh, available to dining patrons or are, are they restricted in any ways for the intended use? Those spots are available to anybody who needs them. They're not restricted as designated by the type of guest. Mr. Rossi. Thank you very much. No further questions. Thank you. Um, Mr. Luker um, in the yes line. Uh, thank you, Madam Moderator. Jay Luker, Precinct 1. Um, I support this. Uh, I think the, the case for it is, is strong, but um, even not knowing the particulars, I would support it out of principle. Uh, I think parking mandates. <clears throat> parking mandates are generally bad policy. Um, a business knows better than the town um, how much parking it needs. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, Um, yeah, I think loosening the, the uh, requirements in this case is a no-brainer. Thanks. Thank you. Um, Mr. McGaw, also in the yes line. Bridger McGaw, Precinct 6, um, and Vice Chair of the Economic Development Advisory Committee, speaking for myself. Um, over the past few years, we've had numerous um, conversations throughout the committee um, about the importance of preserving, growing, nurturing. Um, our small business base here in town. And throughout all those conversations, one of the models that keeps coming back is the importance of the Inn at Hastings Park and the, and the impact it's had over the last 10 years. Um, I hope, I'm excited to see the planning board and the select board unanimously support this and I move a quick passage in support uh, of this article. Thank you. Thank you. Seeing no one else in line, Okay, seeing no one else in line, we will close debate. 
Um, Ms. Keneally, as the maker of the motion, um, you do, or as the presenter, you do get a final two to three minutes if there's anything you need to add. I just, I really just wanted to reiterate that I appreciate the collaborative nature of the relationship that I've been able to foster with the town since going through this process in 2012. Um, it was a lengthy process, it was a rigorous process, it was a fair process, and I think that over the course of our operation, we're going to be celebrating 10 years in operation this coming spring. I think that we have demonstrated an undying, an undying commitment to the community and really have the best interest of not only the community at large, but also the neighborhood that we're lucky to operate in. So I really would appreciate the support in terms of helping us by passing this amendment to make sure that everything Thing just lines up and of course we do hope that you will come and see us sometime we're looking forward to being great ambassadors for the town as we begin the 250th celebration of the Battle of Lexington so thank you so much for your time and your consideration thank you Ms. Keneally okay folks so you should be navigating to your portal if you are remote um, if you're here in the hall, just, you know, you're supposed to be on your tablet now. We are going to prepare to vote on the motion offered by Mr. Grant under Article 12. This um, is a zoning article, um, and it doesn't have anything to do with creating more housing, so it is a two, it will require a two-thirds vote to pass. Um, the voting screen is ready, so all those in favor, um, press yes. All those opposed, press no and all those abstaining, uh, press abstain, and please press the cast your vote button and make sure you get the proper feedback. And um, folks at home, again, um, make sure that you get the proper feedback. If you um, are having trouble voting, please raise your hand in Zoom using the Zoom raise your hand function. Again, this is the instruction for folks who are remote. Um, I don't see any hands raised. And everyone doing okay here in the hall with voting? Okay, so um, we, staff, um, we have a staff person. There's someone right here in the back of the hall, right at the microphone, who needs help. Madam Moderator, yes. I have technology issues. My device is dead, so I need to voice vote. Okay, um, so Ms. Rhodes, how do you vote? I vote yes. And also, my colleague Shireen Ahmed does not have a device that's issued, so she also needs a, a voice vote. Okay, um, and how do you vote, Ms. Ahmed? Uh, I vote yes. You vote yes. Now, can we get you a device? They can't find it. <laughs> well, that's a new one, okay. Um, so They're looking. They're we'll, we'll looking. do vo moderator. voice votes for you tonight, and thank you for your patience. Madam moderator. Yes. I, I just want to confirm that they're both yes votes. Those That's are the name of the second voter. Yes. Um, could you give your precinct number that will help locate you? So Ms. Rhodes is precinct nine. Ms. Med is precinct nine as well. And those are both yes votes. Thank you. Okay, 10 seconds, and then I'll close the vote. Okay, close the vote. And please review your votes on the screen behind me.
In this matter, 161 having voted in the affirmative, five in the negative, and five abstaining, the motion carries, and by more than the necessary two-thirds. Recording in progress. The meeting is now open on Article 2, appropriate for prior year's unpaid bills. The motion is the one that will soon be before you. The motion is the one before you, dated October 27th, 2023, and on file with the town clerk. For the motion, Mr. Pato. Madam Moderator, I so move. I was clearing that, so I'm not sure what I'm moving. Could you repeat it, please? Of course. Um, so this is um, the motion under Article 2, um, which is on the screen, and it's on file with the town clerk, dated October 27th. For that motion, Mr. Pato. Madam Moderator, I so move. Thank you, Mr. Pato. Um, and your comments, please. Uh, Madam Moderator, the Select Board is unanimous, unanimously in support of uh, this motion to pay our unpaid bills. The, uh, the uh, bill for the Minuteman Regional Vocational Technical High School was due to be paid at the end of last fiscal year. There was a mix-up in receiving and issuing the payment, uh, so it missed the time window for the ability to retroactively pay in, in, at the beginning of this fiscal year, so we need to uh, appropriate it at this town meeting. Thank you. Mr. Parker for the Appropriation Committee. Madam Moderator, the Appropriation Committee unanimously recommends approval of Article 2, and I'll just say that um, we have discussed this with town staff and realized that there was uh, some confusion about getting this bill paid. Um, we are satisfied that they are taking steps to uh, correct this possible in the future. Thank you. Um, I would like some technical assistance. So we have a monitor over here that's showing Zoom and it still has the dialogue box about um, recording, the session being recorded. So if we could clear that so we could see folks' um, faces. And Mr. Galatsis with a point of order. That was your point of order. Okay, thank you, Mr. Galatsis. Excellent, thank you. Um, <clears throat> so we're now open for debate and questions on, the, on Article 2. Are there any questions? Any debate? Okay, seeing none, we're going to move to a vote on this motion. So again, folks at home, you need to navigate to the portal from your Zoom screen. And all the folks who are here, we're just going to use our tablet. Um, the vote is ready. All those in favor of the motion offered under Article 2, press yes. All those opposed, press no. And all those abstaining, press abstain. Please press the blue cast your vote button. And if you make a mistake, you can um, vote again um, until I close the vote. So go ahead and hit the correct button, hit cast your vote. Make sure you get the correct feedback. Um, Ms. Rhodes, how do you vote? I vote yes. Ms. Rhodes in Precinct 9 votes yes. Ms. Shireen Ahmed? Ahmed in Precinct 9 votes yes. Ms. Ahmed in Precinct 9 votes yes by voice. Um, do we have any, any folks remotely who are having trouble voting? If so, use the raise hand function in Zoom. And I'm looking to see, I see no raised hands, very good. Anyone else having technical difficulty? Okay, we can now close the vote on Article 2. And review your votes on the screen behind me, and folks at home, review it on Zoom.
In this matter, 170 having voted in the affirmative, zero in, um, in the negative, and one abstaining. The motion carries, it is unanimous. The meeting's now open on Article 3, establish, amend, dissolve, and appropriate to and from specified stabilization funds. The motion is the one before you, dated October 27th, 2023. Sorry, I will pause until the motion's in front of you. Ah, there it is. Um, October 27th, 2023, and on file with the town clerk. Ms. Berry, for that motion, Ms. Berry. Madam Moderator, I so move. Ms. Berry. Madam Moderator, specified stabilization funds are established by a vote of town meeting for specific purposes. Money in stabilization funds may be invested in the interest earned accrues to that particular fund. Funds may de be deposited into a stabilization fund by a majority vote of town meeting. Accumulated balances in these funds may be appropriated out for their designated purpose by a two-thirds vote of town meeting. Article 3 is requesting one action to appropriate $2,699,381 into the capital stabilization fund from the tax levy. This funding is available due to the town's actual new levy growth coming in higher than projected in the town's fiscal 2023 budget. Of this amount, $2,303,236 is specifically related to development in commercial properties with special permits or located in the Hartwell Avenue corridor, where the town has designated a fiscal guideline to set aside revenue from new growth. Appropriating into the capital stabilization fund will allow the town to continue to mitigate excluded debt service for future capital projects, including a construction project at Lexington High School. Madam Moderator, the Select Board unanimously supports passage of this article. Thank you, Ms. Berry. And I do want to note for folks that um, on the screen where you're queuing and later where you'll vote, it says a two-thirds vote is required, but this is a simple majority because the motion before you is only to put money into a stabilization fund. And Mr. Macarios is not correcting me. Yes, okay. Um, so this will be a simple majority. For the Capital Expenditures Committee, Mr. Lamb. Madam Moderator, the Capital Expenditures Committee unanimously uh, recommends approval of this article. As a note, um, we appreciate the town manager and the select board's aggressive savings into the capital stabilization fund over the past over a decade, as far as I know, and we appreciate town meeting support for this policy. As you can see, the results are going to be um, quite good for the taxpayer when we get to the Lexington High School project. Thank you. Thank you. And for the Appropriation Committee, Mr. Podicky. Madam Moderator, the Appropriation Committee unanimously supports approval of this article. Thank you. Thank you. We're now open for debate and questions. Seeing no one in line. We will move to a vote. Um, so folks, pick up your tablet if you're in the hall at home, navigate from Zoom to the portal, and prepare to vote on this motion. All those in favor, press yes. All opposed, press no. All those abstaining, press abstain. And please press the blue cast your vote button. Make sure you get the proper feedback. Oh my goodness. Okay, well let's let's uh have you voted? Please vote. <laughs> Please vote and make sure you get the proper feedback. Okay, do you see your name in the on the right hand side and how you voted? This is so exciting. Okay, wonderful. Um folks at home, raise your hand in Zoom if you're having trouble voting. I do not see any raised hands. And it looks like ah, do you, are you having trouble voting? Can you try again to press the button, or is it just churning? It's, it's just churning. Okay, so if you could move to the microphone, give your, you know, give your name and precinct number for the folks at home and how you're voting. Avram Baskin, precinct two, I vote yes. Mr. Baskin votes yes. Okay, close the vote. and review your votes. Hold on. 
I'll view it. In this matter, 170 having voted in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and two abstaining, the motion carries. It is unanimous. The meeting is now open on Article 4, Amend FY 2024 Operating, Enterprise, and CPA Budgets. The motion is the one before you, dated October 27, 2023, and on file with the town clerk, Mr. Pato, for the motion. Madam Moderator, I so move. Madam Moderator, this is an annual article that allows adjustments to be made to the current fiscal year, FY24, appropriations for the General Fund, Enterprise Fund, and CPA operating budgets. Article 4, Part A is requesting an increase to the public facilities line of the General Fund budget voted under Article 4 of the 2023 Annual Town Meeting. A detailed description of this request to support maintenance of municipal buildings can be found in the Appropriation Committee report dated October 31st, 2023. Article 4, Parts B and C are requesting decreases to the FY24 Water Enterprise and Wastewater Enterprise operating budgets as voted under Article 5 of the 2023 Annual Town Meeting. These adjustments reflect actual debt service payments for FY24 and decrease, decreases to the MWRA water and wastewater assessments for FY24, both of which were finalized after the budget was voted. Reducing these budgeted expenses will have a favorable impact on the town's water and wastewater rates for fiscal year 2024. The select board unanimously supports the passage of this article. Thank you. And for the Appropriation Committee, Mr. Barnstein. Madam Moderator, the Appropriation Committee unanimously recommends approval of this article. Thank you. We're now open for debate and questions. Seeing no one in the queue, we will move to a vote on this motion. So folks at home, this is time for you to navigate back to your portal and here in the hall, pick up your tablet. So all those in favor of the motion offered under Article 4, press yes. All opposed, press no. You may also abstain. And please press the cast your vote button and make sure you get the proper feedback. If you're in the hall and you're having trouble voting, please stand in place and um, wave your arm for staff. And I am monitoring, uh, Mr. Pato and I are monitoring the Zoom list to see if anyone's raising a hand. Okay, we're going to close the vote. And please review your votes. I don't wanna jinx things, but I'm really proud of everybody tonight. <laughs> Everybody, staff, all of you, everyone remote, boards and committees. I hope I haven't jinxed it, but this is amazing.
In this matter, 166 having voted in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and one abstaining. The motion carries. It is unanimous. The meeting is now open on Article 5, Appropriate for Authorized Capital Improvements. The motion is the one before you for indefinite postponement. It is soon before you, there it is, dated October 6, 2023, and on file with the town clerk. Mr. Sandine for the motion. I so move. Mr. Sandine. The select board unanimously approves indefinite postponement of this article. Mr. Lamb for the Capital Expenditures Committee. Madam Moderator, the Capital Expenditures Committee unanimously recommends, uh, re uh, recommends indefinite postponement of this article. Mr. Um, Mr. Parker for the Appropriation Committee. Uh, Madam Moderator, the uh, Appropriation Committee unanimously recommends indefinite postponement of this article. Any, do, any questions, folks? Okay, seeing none, we'll move to the vote. All those in favor of indefinite postponement of Article 5 um, may press yes. All opposed, press no. You may also abstain. Press the blue cast your vote button and make sure you got the proper feedback. I'm checking to see if anyone working remotely has raised a hand. I don't see anything. Um, any folks in the hall having trouble voting? Okay, we'll keep it open five more seconds. And we'll close the vote. And please review the votes on the screen. Okay, just because I said I was proud of you doesn't mean you guys can start to creep away, all right? Where, where are the, you know, we need, we need to get back to 170 people voting. In this matter, 164 having voted in the affirmative, one in the negative, and two abstaining, the motion carries. The meeting's now open on Article 6, Appropriate Opioid Settlement. The motion is the one before you, dated October 13th, 2023, and on file with the town clerk. Mr. L uh, let's see, Mr. Pado for the motion. Um, Madam Moderator, Mr. Lucente is in a noisy remote location, so I am speaking for him. I so move. Thank you. Um, folks, turn your attention to the screen um, for the video presentation from Ms. Belanger. Hello, town meeting members. My name is Joanne Belanger, the Director of Public Health in Lexington. I will be presenting Article 6 to appropriate the next installment of statewide opioid settlement funds. Town meeting first approved opioid settlement funds through Article 9 of Special Town Meeting 2022-3 and the town will continue to receive installments from opioid manufacturers and distributors through fiscal year 2039. These funds will be appropriated for the specific purpose of opioid epidemic abatement programming, including educating the public, connecting those affected to recovery and treatment, and reducing the overall harm caused by the opioid epidemic. 
A working group of town staff was formed following the initial acceptance of settlement funds in order to identify applicable projects and programs. Members of staff have been taking trainings for Narcan administration and as well as mental health first aid for youth and the adult. The Lexington Health Department was successful in gaining approval from the Massachusetts Department of Public Health for controlled substance registration. The Lexington Health Department is now enabled to, to order naloxone uh, through the Mass Department of Public Health Community Naloxone Purchasing Program at no cost. Some of the initiatives the group has worked on are rescue kits that have been designed to include Narcan, fentanyl testing strips, gloves, a CPR mask, instructions, and information with referral and overdose prevention information. The program is still being developed, but the intent is to have these kits in the first responder vehicles and also available at the health department free of charge for anyone in the community. Narcan administration training will also be provided if necessary. The group is reviewing the steps to implement a statewide community public health initiative called SAMBOX. The SAMBOX initiative is a Nalox box program for opioid recovery and harm reduction that brings together the awareness of the Good Samaritan law and overdose assistance law with the use of an opioid response rescue kit. The initiative includes a goal to place these rescue boxes in strategic places within communities around the Commonwealth with hopes that they will become as recognizable as AEDs are. Moving forward, the group will begin engagement with the community members and invite those with lived experiences and professional experience to, in to join us in the working group. Thank you. Uh, for the position of the select board, Mr. Pato. Madam moderator, the select board unanimously supports the passage of Article 6. For the Appropriation Committee, Mr. Bartenstein. Uh, Madam moderator, the Appropriation Committee unanimously supports the adoption of Article 6. Thank you. We're now open for debate and questions. Seeing no one in line, we will move to a vote. Folks at home, navigate back to your portal, and those in the hall, uh, make sure that your tablet's on and ready. Those in favor of the motion offered under Article 6, press yes. Those opposed, press no. You may also abstain. And please press the blue cast your vote button. Make sure you get the proper feedback. If you're having trouble voting here in the hall, stand in place and wave your hand. Ah, uh, let's see. And let's see if we have anybody at home who's having trouble. If you're remote and having trouble voting, use the raise hand function in Zoom. But seeing no hands raised, we will, oh, excuse me. Have you been able to vote successfully? Okay, good, good. Thanks. Okay, we will now close the vote. And please review your votes. There we go. One seventy two.
In this matter, 169 having voted in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and three abstaining, the motion carries. It is unanimous. The meeting is now open on Article 7, Appropriate Housing Resale and Rental Monitoring Fees. The motion is the one before you for indefinite postponement, dated October 26, 2023, and on file with the town clerk, Ms. Hay, for that motion. Madam, moderate, Madam Moderator, I so move. Ms. Hay. Thank you. Uh, Madam Moderator, the select board is unanimously in support of the post indefinite postponement of this article. For the Appropriation Committee, Mr. Michelson. Madam Moderator, Eric Michelson. The Appropriation Committee unanimously recommends indefinite postponement. Thank you. Um, any questions, folks? Okay, seeing none, we will move to a vote. Okay, all those in favor of indefinite postponement of Article 7, press yes. All opposed, press no. You may also abstain, plus press the blue cast your vote button. Remote folks, raise your hand in Zoom. If you are having trouble voting, if you're in the hall, stand up in place and wave your hands. Everybody good? Okay, we'll close the vote. Madam Monitor, we have a member online with a hand up. Oh, thank you. Um, who's that? Ms. Jensen. Ms. Jensen, for what reason do you have your hand up? Uh, sorry, I was a, a second too late. Uh, it's a yes vote from me. Thank you. Okay. Um, would the clerk mind recording um, Ms. Jensen in Precinct 8 as a yes? Thank you, Ms. Jensen. So that means in this matter, 166 having voted in the affirmative, one in the negative, and two abstaining, um, the motion carries. All right, folks, this is an early night, but we were doing a hybrid meeting for the first time, and um, we tried to pace things out. You guys are superstars, so, um, you know, go enjoy dinner, enjoy an early night, have an early drink. Um, do not leave with your um, devices. So let me tell you what's gonna happen be, um, when we meet tomorrow night. Uh, let's just keep it down so you can hear me. Um, so we have some um, town meeting uh, memorials Wednesday night, so those will be first. Um, we will then take up Article 9, which is the um, ranked choice voting, and then we'll continue with Article 8, Article 10, and Article 11. Um, so, Mr. Pato, for a motion to adjourn until tomorrow night, Wednesday, November 8th, at 7.30 p.m. here in Batten Hall, and also remotely as a hybrid meeting. Um, Mr. Pato. Madam Moderator, I so move. Question comes on adjourning. Um, all those in favor, say aye. Aye. All opposed? Any folks at home? All right, we are adjourned. <laughs>